Hey. Hi, <laughs> I'm Joan. Hi, Nancy. And we're going to give some tips about using acrylic paint and how you can um, dispose of it in an ecological way. And Nancy has researched a lot of other ways that you can um, reduce your impact on the environment of using acrylic paints. So we're going to start with um, the ways that um, Nancy has found, and I am gonna give a demonstration on using a, a paint crash kit by Golden Paints. And um, then we're also gonna give you links on um, where you can find more information. So we're glad you're here. <clears throat> okay, well, I'll start off with some of the research that I have found on the internet. <laughs> I think it was about three months ago we started talking about this because, well, it was a little more than three months ago, we started talking about this together because we were both interested in doing our work in a more eco-friendly way. And I knew I was starting a 12-week painting class starting early March, and I was going to be painting five days a week and realizing that I would be having a lot of potential waste water and waste paper towels to clean off brushes. And I decided that I needed to figure that out before I started the class. So what I did was um, look into the, the way, um, even the paints I was going to be using, the acrylic paints uh, exclusively for that class. And I realized that I wanted to find out more about the companies producing the paint and what kinds of, um, efforts they are making at their company with the way they manufacture the paint products and the way they even man manufacture their paint brushes and so forth. So um, I looked at how we as painters, as artists, we can choose eco-friendly products to be using. We can choose producers of these products who are being eco-friendly as well and came up with a number of companies that um, for at least a couple of decades have been doing exactly this. They've been producing products that artists can use that are really safe uh, for, for persons to use and also for the environment. So um, I looked at the eco-friendly production facilities. Um, there are several of them that I'll list later, but I wanted to know if they were using solar, wind, and um, even water filtration and reusing water so that we know that even from the very, from the ground up, these companies are producing uh, products that I'm confident in purchasing. <clears throat> they also have the, the eco-friendly source materials. There are non-toxic op options for paints, for instance, uh, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. Those are, those are toxic products. They have heavy metals in them, but you can also choose the same color or very, very similar that have no none of the toxins in them. So you can really choose to make a difference in that way as you choose your materials. Um, so the other thing I've learned is that um, product safety can be confirmed online. You can go and look at, let's say, uh, Golden's uh, acrylic paints. You can go online to their website and they produce a tremendous amount of very technical information that is available to artists. And this is one example of the kind of product information they would have on their website. It lists everything about their paints by color. So each color, you can see not only its transparency, but if it has any toxic or heavy metal materials in it, it's a very excellent um, uh, review of all the paints they produce by each and every color. So that was something that uh, I was surprised. I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was surprised at the level of detail that they do give you. So it's really, really useful. And yep. that's go Golden Colors Golden Company? Paint Company. It's okay. in upstate New York, okay. I believe. Um, but other companies too, like Utrecht and others that produce all of these products, they give you a tremendous amount of information on their website so it's really useful if you're serious about this, you can go to the, those websites and any paint products that you want to buy, you can look at and you can look up online and see what, what they've done in terms of 
making sure that their paint products are really safe for people and for the environment. Um, another thing you can do, instead of going to, let's say, you know, Golden's or Utrecht's uh, website, you can type in uh, fair trade art supplies and you can just Google that. And no end of information comes up in terms of what kinds of things are really uh, very safe to be using. And um, you can e also type in material data safety sheet on, let's say on golden products. Then you'll be able to see what they say. That's, so that's a separate agency, not just golden saying, we're really great for the environment, but also using these um, international standards. They're basically telling you what's really safe to use and what's not, instead of just having to trust Golden, the company who's making the product. Yes. I, I have a question on the fair trade art supplies. Does that refer to the employment of people? Meaning it, fair it, trade? It, includes, it includes that as well. Okay. Yes. Um, what they're trying to do is have all these international standards available because uh, obviously companies can say, oh, we're uh, we're natural. We only use natural. Yeah, natural ores, ores or naturally or um, safely produced ores, and that environmentally sound as they produce the ores. We can we can say we can trust the people who who do produce the or do find those ores, but the companies who do that are very few in the world. We are either going to decide to trust them that they're doing this sustainably, or we're going to say we're going to have to find out from someone else in the international community. So these other ways of getting around that question help us because we're not just trusting the companies that produce and sell things. We're trusting people who are the oversight chemists and people who understand the environment. So, and I'm, I'm not a chemist, so I have to trust somebody else at a higher level. And it can't be just the company producing the product that I'm buying. <clears throat> so, um, Anyway, so we define eco-friendly by the way that things are formulated, starting with the ores that are, are extracted from the earth, um, the way they're manufactured. So if a company, again, is using solar power, they're using wind power to produce their filtering water and reusing the water, that's all better for the environment than the alternative, than the way things used to be done um, before 20, 30 years ago. Um, and also, by the way, uh, companies are having a programs, uh, Golden has a program, they've had it for a couple of decades at least, where they will take back unused paint product. They will, they will take the things that are delivered to hazardous waste, and they will actually take them off your hands so that you don't have to worry about dumping them somewhere, which we don't want to be doing. We don't want to be dumping stuff in the forest or in the lakes or down the sink or anything. We want to have it go someplace where it's going to be properly taken care of. And they do, some of these companies do that. So that's another thing. Um, <clears throat> so just generally wanting to be less wasteful, less toxic with our paint practice or with our arts practice um, and looking at what the companies are doing and what these higher level international associations are telling us about the quality of these things. Um, <clears throat> now we have some examples here. There are many, many, but I'll just give you a couple of examples. There's a company called Earth Easy. So you can go to eartheasy.com and they use plant dyes and beeswax and other things that are natural like that, that you can have a great deal of confidence that the product I'm buying from them is something that is not only sustainable and produced sustainably, but is not going to be toxic and not going to be harming the earth either as I'm trying to dispose of some of the products. And I'll get into more of that later in terms of my actual practice the way I do this and the way, the really minimal amount of water I use and I paint five days a week. And I'll get into that later, but it's, it's I'm, a, I'm feeling better about the way I'm doing this because I'm using so little water. I'm using so little paper towel, things like that. Um, <clears throat> so Earth Easy is one good, also um, from their company, you can also feel confident about buying their brushes, pencils, and other utensils for your paint, painting and artwork because they even reforest for the wood for paintbrushes and other tools like that. They actually reforest where they've taken product out of the woods and they'll replant so that they're not, they're, they're totally sustainable in that way too. So that's another thing. And um, M. Graham and Company is another one that's very good. They um, 
use walnut oil as a paint binder instead of some kind of toxic other chemical thing. And the paintings might take a little bit longer to dry, like if you use other natural oils like that, but they, it's not a lot longer to dry. And it's a much natural, more natural uh, substance. So you feel confident that it's not gonna be polluting anything either. <clears throat> and it's just safer to be working with um, for your health too. Um, so you can take the natural dyes. Okay, portion. sure. Um, <clears throat> the, the business world has come a long way in being able to offer um, plant-based um, pigments and making them into paint available. Um, the, let's see, Natural Earth Paint Company, I, um, they actually have an acrylic medium, which is plant-based. It's not made out of fossil fuels, which is really good to know. Um, there's several um, companies that uh, offer that now. Um, Botanical Colors is a company based out of Seattle. And if you're looking to explore natural paints and dyes, they're, they're an excellent company to um, go to their website. They have um, Feedback Friday, where you can ask questions about how to use products or anything under the sun related to plant dyes, and they will answer it. Um, and they also sponsor a lot of um, classes available. Let's see. And then Golden Paints um, has, they call it a crash paint kit for acrylic paint water, how to dispose of it ecologically. And I'll be demonstrating that a little later. But I, I just wanted to let you know that um, there is acrylic paint available now that is the same colors as a fossil fuel acrylic paint that's plant-based. So it's much easier on the environment and you're getting the same color product. So, okay. <clears throat> um, the other thing I've looked at too is to think about the packaging. <clears throat> I, I'm also interested in buying you know, when I'm researching who to buy from, to buy acrylic paint from, or oils too, I want them to be recycling their packaging and having these things be either reusable or um, just completely biodegradable. So that is another, <clears throat> another thing that Natural Earth Paint Company does and 100% solar powered as well, which is great. And no toxins or solvents or synthetics. They really produce a good, you know, very good product. Um, Golden, again, I mentioned earlier, they're very, very good, 100% solar and wind, and creating packaging, packaging that is also biodegradable, which is really impressive. And starting in 1992, so a long time ago, they have that paint program where they'll take paint back from the, from the hazardous sites, and anything that you're not going to use, you can bring to the hazardous, and they'll submit it. And so you don't have to worry about where that's going to go, or trying to dispose of it somehow, which would be really impossible to do. So, <clears throat> so um, and Golden says they only source, get their source material from eco-friendly companies. So their ores, they say, everything that they do. And I watched a couple of videos of the way they make their paint. And it's from the whole thing that their whole process is very, it's just meticulous, really. So I was really impressed and I've bought a lot of their product anyway, but it's impressive to see that they do everything to that high level. It's, it's really very good. <clears throat> the other thing I thought about during this 12 week class this spring was minimizing the use of water. I mean, obviously you have to use some water to clean off your brushes and, and that kind of thing, or even mix your paints a little bit. Uh, Windsor and Newton is a longtime company. I think they're British, but <clears throat> they process and reuse their all their water. Mm -hmm. So they really, they're doing, I, so I learned from reading about them and watching some of the videos about their company and their processes that I can create my own process at home that's similar to that about just water and any kind of waste product that I'm producing because I'm painting five days a week. So um, 
<clears throat> so I was impressed with it, what they were doing and I figured out my own system and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so again, protecting the artists and the environment. Um, Utrecht company is very, very impressive too. They have both traditional and organic paints which gives the artist a choice. You can choose between the traditional paint, the, um, let's say the uh, titanium white paint, for instance. That's a, that's a heavy metal. They've got um, product in there that is unsafe. You can choose to use that because you love the bright brilliance of it because a bright white is really important and it, it helps also accentuate other colors you mix it with, and it brightens those as well. So we love the, what it does, but the fact that it's a dioxide, titanium dioxide is not a good thing. So you wanna really minimize your exposure to that. And especially if you're gonna be using that color and you're doing applying paint and you're sanding, so like a lot of us will make many layers of paint and then we'll sometimes sand back into it with sandpaper, that creates a dust mm. and that is unsafe. So you're either wearing a mask and, and gloves and you know whatever, you're protecting yourself and, and goggles, or you're just not gonna do that process. It's the same with, uh, it, with that product in pastels and chalk, colored chalk too, mm. same idea. You're gonna have dust and that's going to be potentially, you know, just like dangerous and also cadmium red, cadmium yellow, those are also heavy metals. You can choose, the now paint companies now make a red that's very, very, very similar to that and a cadmium yellow, which are beautiful, beautiful colors, but you don't need to have the cadmium product, the heavy metal in your world if you don't want to. So you can really choose. And it's a good thing to think about because um, especially if you have other people in your household who are more sensitive, they might already have some kind of... Um, health issue or something. You don't want any of that around them at all. So it's good to make, be able to make those choices. Uh, and again, we mentioned the safe disposal for acrylics. Um, I brought this along, even though I didn't bring paints with it, but this is my system for painting five days a week. And I have, these are at the grocery and they are, it's a baking pan. They come to a package with two plastic, covers. So this is a really nice way to, I didn't invent this by the way, and a lot of other people do this. And then you put, I put a piece of paper towel and a piece of what we call deli wrap for wrapping deli sandwiches and things. You can buy this 500 at a time. Put this in there and I get it wet and then I let it drain. And I use this, I put my paints in, put a little bit of paint in there. And I paint with that for, let's say a day. And I want to save my paint. So I am not wasting any paint and I keep this cover on it. And I, if I didn't come back to this for five days it would still be highly usable. And normally acrylic dries and hardens immediately within several minutes. And this way I can keep my paint, not have to throw it away. And it preserved for five days very safely. So it's, it's really very nice. And the other thing that, um, and did you want to show that kit now? You can go ahead and okay. finish what you want to say. The other thing I wanted to explain is um, the way I've painted for 12 weeks, now it's 14 weeks, I've used the same covered plastic pitcher of about two thirds of a gallon of water. I'm still using that water and a roll of that blue paper towel, shop towels from the hardware store. I have not used the entire roll of paper towel yet. I've used about two thirds of it in 14 weeks and I paint five days a week. And all I do is I wipe off the brush with the paper towel as thoroughly as I can so that I've gotten almost all the paint off of it without using any water. And then I use a little bit of water to tap it in there, dry it off as much as I can. And I do that about three times and the brush is completely clean. And I'm still using the same roll of paper towel and I still have the same two thirds gallon of, of water. I've never changed my water. It's amazing. So I'm, I feel really good about that because I'm not throwing any water away anywhere, uh, at least not yet. 
And it's been 14 weeks and I'm still using that water this week. So I'm, I'm still continuing to use it. The, the um, solids of the paint, of the acrylic paint fall to the bottom of this, this pitcher. Mm -hmm. So you can see them down there. There's kind of a layer, but otherwise there's water above and it's still highly usable. So, anyway, so that's, it works quite well. And I'm not wasting any paint either. That's the other nice thing. <clears throat> I'm not leaving anything on a palette where I have to throw it out, you know, after it dries. I can still use it until it's all used up. It's amazing. Thank you for all that information. Um, could could you turn this around now and um, I'll I'll sh um, show this is um, this is all the um, trash paint solids. It's something that Golden Paints um, developed, and it's actually available around the world. I learned about it from a teacher in Germany. She, I was learning online and she demonstrated how to do this. And I found it at um, Blick. And so it's, it's very available. And basically what you get in the kit is um, you've been, say you've been painting and you've cleaned your brush like, like Nancy did. And you just have a bucket that you, um, although Nancy maybe never needs to change her water at all, yeah. but when you're ready to change your water, you pour it in here. And um, then they have um, two, when you get about a gallon, then they have two products. The first one, you just uh, loosen the lid and you let's see. Here we go. And then you just push and go up to one ounce and put it in the water, in your paint water, and then just stir for about a minute. And what happens is that that product combines with the acrylic paint and it separates it from the water. And so it hangs onto it and it paint starts dropping down to the bottom. <clears throat> And then there's a neutralizer solution that you do the same thing. Loosen the cap and get an ounce and put it in there and stir again and wait about 15 minutes. And then <clears throat> Golden has, um, this is a colander and they give you these mega coffee filters. Mm -hmm. And you just put one in the colander and then pour your, your treated paint into there and it starts dripping. I, I saved an example of, this is actually two gallons, but uh, the water drips in here and this is water that can be poured down the sink, it's safe. And then what's left over is the paint solids and you just um, wrap this up and put it in the trash can. So that way, um, and I, I wanted to add something I, we haven't, word we haven't used is microplastics. Acrylic is actually plastic. And so when you hear about the sea life dying because of microplastics, it's, it's not over in California, it's, it's right here in Ely, Minnesota, where if we put any of this paint down the sink, that water ends up in the lakes here, and then all of the fish and the turtles and that live in that water, it gets in their system and they die. So it's really, um, eventually I don't think we'll be pouring any paint nobody will down the sinks because unless we don't want there to be any life in the lakes. So uh, just as I said, this is, and it comes with um, uh, really clear instructions. Um, so not sure if we have anything else to say except for that. Um, 
Thank you, Nancy, for all your research. That was quite impressive. Um, this all started just because I learned about this crash kit. I was telling Nancy about it and her eyes lit up and she did a lot of research. So we do have this available to you um, through the Ely Folk School. And so you can just contact the Folk School and they can send you the list of resources. So and I have one last thing I wanted to learn. When we were going to be doing this, I mentioned this to a friend of mine who's uh, in the Twin Cities, and she had just come off of a six-month uh, zero-waste challenge in Hennepin County. And Hennepin County is the largest county in Minnesota. So they have this very, very uh, uber program of all of their, they have organic waste that you can, you can be involved in these programs to the extent that you want to or you can accommodate. And she found that with that six month program, her commitment to that program of zero waste, she changed a number of things about her life, just her household. How was she, what was she gonna buy? How was she was gonna dispose of it? What could be recycled safely? And they decided to, um, there were six things that they came away from, uh, from doing the six month program that they were very impressed that they changed this about their household. And I'm just going to name a couple of them, but um, if they're going to go to a cafe for lunch or something, she'll bring her own doggy bag, her own container to put her food in, or they will share a meal and not, they won't need a takeout mm -hmm. package. Um, she never brings any plastic bags to her house ever again. None, which I think is really impressive because it's kind of hard to do. <clears throat> um, she stopped buying certain products that don't have the right number on the bottom of the plastic bottle, like a laundry detergent or something. If her county won't take that number, if it's a five or a three, that's okay. But the other ones, she's not going to buy them. So that was impressive. Um, instead of buying gift wrapping, she uses a, it's a Japanese uh, method where you use fabric that is reusable or you give a gift of for Christmas and it's wrapped in something that's another gift that's a fabric gift, um, like tea towels or something like that. Um, and she does the organic recycling, they participate in that every week. So when their things are picked up, they're labeled separately. So if there's any food waste in their house and it's organic, it goes in that container. So everything is then Hennepin County reuses all those materials and they have, I watched a couple of videos about this, they actually have <clears throat> extensive ways to do all the recycling and then certain soils are used for Hennepin County projects of landscaping and all it comes in full circle. So it, I was really impressed with what she was able to change in their lives. <clears throat> it's interesting entirely. that that Hennepin so County sure. would actually separate the organic yeah. compost from yeah, the and then they Yeah, and then they filter yeah. all that and screen it and then they use it for their landscaping projects around the whole county. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all completely to good use. Um, and then the last thing we have is just a listing of some other research things we did that we thought you might, if you have time and if you're interested in doing more with eco-friendly living, um, you could look into some of these things. I was really impressed with all of them. Yeah, um, whatever county you live in, um, go to your county waste and recycling um, internet and find out, just educate yourself about um, what you should and shouldn't be doing and what options there are. It's um, surprising. We we have both Lake and St. Louis County here and mm -hmm. Nancy mentioned mm -hmm. Hennepin. Um, what is this Keeping Things Green by Mary Ellen Ritter? Oh, it was just a good, it's a great article. If you Google that, you'll get this article and it's it's a great article reminding you that it's not easy to completely go green in your household in, in all in one fell swoop. It's it's difficult. Um, you really have to break some habits, and you have to be really self, you know, really really aware and conscious about everything you're purchasing. And so it's um, it's a good article that reminds you that it's it's okay to start small, and don't worry about doing the whole world at one time. That's a good point. Yeah, so baby steps. Reassuring. Yep. Just reassuring. So, And I did go to the my uh, Lake County. I'm in Lake County, and I went to that. And right on the front homepage, 
you'll easily see there's a column of things that you can recycle and things that you cannot in Lake County. Mm -hmm. And I was really very pleased to see that with exception of two things, I don't buy anything that cannot be recycled in Lake County, except two things. Mm -hmm. So I really felt good about that, that there are only two things. I buy some batteries and I buy, you know, oil containers for some reason you can't recycle in Lake County. So um, things like um, Wesson oil or whatever, they can't be recycled. But everything else on this list, I don't put, bring into my house at all. So I feel pretty good about that, just knowing that we're doing, you know, we're already doing some good things. Yeah, and I, I recently, um, in the local paper, they had an article, top 10 things to remember about recycling in North St. Louis County. And um, that, that was a handy list. If you um, just keep your eye out, you'll start seeing these types of things. And um, so there's, it's a lot of positive movement toward preserving the environment and our impact on it. So thank you for thank you. Um, tuning in and um, get a hold of the Ely Folk School if you have any questions or re want resources. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.